can, but he might stuff you. He might straighten out his leg. When I come back here, he might stop it. Or immediately retract his leg and go right into a hunting scene. But, so, if we're, we're in a situation where you're owning this guy, but you just can't put him away, you can't put him away. There's so many situations like that. Uh, Kira's been in some situations like that where it's like 40 minute matches, hour and a half matches. He's owning, pass, mount, pass, mount, but can't put it away. Two show closers. And when you're in a situation like that where you're like, you're not going to let this finish. But you're clearly better at jiu-jitsu than this person. But you just, she was just like, it's too tight. Couldn't finish her from the mount. If I'm in the mount, show closer one is going to be, let him bite on this three quarter mount. Show closer one is going into the truck from here, all right? She tried to finish her in the mount, arm triangle, whatever, arm bars just wasn't working. Coach says show closer two, boom, he takes this. But show closer two isn't the truck, it's the honey hole. So now we gotta switch this to quarter bar. And they're gonna watch you. It's, they're gonna help you. Because this, traditionally, this position for him is better. This is better for me. I got a lot of game from him. I've I read a whole book on this, on this position. There's a lot of game for him. A lot of game. The, oh, none of that game exists here. So he's going to help you. I would help him. So when they do that, they're going to help you. Look, as he takes it over, that's when you catch him. That show closer, too. Boom. That's you're, you're just owning the guy. You're like, you know what? He just, his sea rights too tight. We're going to mount him and let him have a foot. And he's either going to go one, show closer one, to the truck. Three-quarter guard, you really don't have to do anything. Yeah. Show closer to him, you're in three-quarter guard, but now you've got to bring your knee over to the other side to make it quarter guard, which means you go into the honey hole. Does that make sense? Those two powerful transitions right there. There's a lot of guys you can map, but you can't finish them. A lot of guys. you got to go after their legs. All right, guys? Any questions? There's a lot of stuff. So much to work on. I wish we could go till two in the morning, but um, I got a shift with the hustler, so. Yeah. <laughs> 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 um, anyways, any questions, anything? All right, guys, um, you guys can start rolling now. Um, I got to cut out, got the dinner, I got to. Uh, but we'll take a group picture, and if you guys want a single shot, I'll take some single, single shot as well. Uh, thank you very much for coming. This is just a <laughs>
we're on a goal, we're on a mission. He's not on a mission, just patience. He's, uh, he's getting medieval with Las Vegas. This is just the beginning, it's no joke. We're going to be heavy with everything, though, extra, extra heavy. And now with the adoption of the EDI rules, and most of these things should only turn we have to get extra heavy on the overtime round. And what do those overtime rounds mean? It means you better be good at rear naked chokes and arm bars and get good and really good at getting out of rear naked chokes and arm bars. And rear naked chokes and arm bars, that, that's the essence of jiu-jitsu. And if you want to be good at EDI, you have to be good at that. You have to be a Marcelo Garcia on the back. So that's part of it. That's what we're all doing. We want to, we want to be strong in those overtime rounds. We want to run those overtime rounds. You end up with an overtime with the 10th round guy, man, that's the your best, your best bet is to go ball down and finish it in regulation. Don't think that that kind of guy is overtime. They always work on those overtime rounds. We do an execute on A day, D day, and H day. We do no matter what. We're going to be doing at least 10 minutes of overtime, EDI overtime. So over a period of a couple of years, it's just going to be hard <coughs> for anybody to, to replicate those kind of numbers outside of 10 You understand? So it's all about numbers. Stop pulling away. Every day, traditional jiu-jitsu don't work on heel hooks. That's another day where it has boom. Stand work on it, you're good. Another day, boom. You still ain't down, stay there, boom. Man. By the time they figure out, we gotta get on the goddamn hill. Years ahead. That's the goal. Keep banning them. Keep hating them. The more you hate them, the better. Because you know what's happening over the last couple of years? Anytime high level, you guys come through, they always get you hooked. They always get you hooked now. Now, my, my girls, my kids, Derek, Derek's 14. He's still looking like, like a grown ass man, like he's 21. You understand? Everybody's still hooking right away. Everybody. Man, the, the, the great thing about heel hooks is the great thing. Uh, you don't have to pass the guard or sweep to finish it. Position you get to, you got some work to do. Don't be thinking about no rear naked chuck. You got to pass that guard first. You understand? Now with heel hooks, that's the, be that's the beauty of them. I'm, I'm going to close with this. Those two games? It's always best, like in football, to try to run the football down their throat. If you can't run, then you pass. If you can't smash, then you go after the legs. If you can't smash, then you go after the legs. You go after the legs, and you could have smashed, but you went after legs, and he's good at legs, and he switched up and got you. Man, you could have smashed this dude. This happened recently. High-level purple belt came through, and that's one of my high-level purple belts. They, they just, they, my, my, my guy was just like kind of playing little legs with them, little blah, 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 and he got caught in him. And he was, he was mad. So then what did he do? He, he's one of my best smashers. What do you think? He hooked on express. That's not even your best game. He ended up tapping three times by smashing them all night long. So that's an example of, like in a tournament, see if you could run the ball first. You start throwing these bombs and throw interceptions. Throw them while you drop back. That's always the mall of football. Always see if you could run first, keep their offense on the sideline, march down the field. That's smash to jitsu. March down the field, pass the guard. Now take the back, boom. He's not even in the game. He just gets the no hitter. Shut out. Always try that first. When it matters, if you can't clinch him, if you can't smash him, then attack his legs. You understand? Don't start throwing the ball when you have the best running back in the game. And you're, you're throwing the ball. That doesn't make any sense. Simple football logic applies to the jiu-jitsu game. Same thing. Smash them first. Work on that game first. Then, then you can play your leg locks if it doesn't work. You say, Coach, I never did to work my leg locks though with that velocity. And that must be your smash game. That's incredible. That's a good problem to have. You're not working on your legs because you smash everybody. Hell yeah. That's what I want to hear. Got it? Uh, Casey wants to give out a couple of promotions. Yeah. I'll make it real quick. Um, one of the guys w was uh, one of the first people I met here in Vegas. He literally opened the gym up to me and uh, allowed Kira and I to train when we had nowhere to go. And uh, he, he comes in all the time and he's super tough. He's really hard for me to deal with. And <laughs> in, in order in order for me to feel good about myself, I have to at least give him a few bucks. Eric, come on up.
guy, he's actually tapped me. And uh, one of one of the guys that I look up to the most, Dane Prokopo, was over here. And when he left, he called me and was like, dude, what the fuck are you doing, man? This guy's got to be a blue belt. You have to promote him. It's not fair. So Jordan, come up. <laughs> Um, if you guys don't know, my name is Eric. I run the pit down the street, and we never really had a jujitsu instructor, but I've always admired, loved Tenth Planet, and like it fits our style perfectly. So I just it was like a blessing when her case was moving down the road. So as opposed to be like, no, like you know, we're two different gyms. I said they're the best. Train there if you want high level jujitsu. Like I'm just grateful that he accepts my students and myself and is open-minded to have another gym train, and that's the way it should be. So, super grateful. I'll always be a white belt, this is crazy, so. <laughs> it's mad, but thank you everybody. Um, thank you so much, Coach. I've been, I've been working a long time for this. Um, I've been training for like four years now. I started training in the middle of 2012. When I first started training, my coach himself was only a purple belt, so I, I was never had a black belt coach until I met Casey, and I've been with Casey for a while now, and I've really been liking it here, and just, just so happy this day finally came. <laughs> hey, real quick, I want to do something real quick. <clears throat> Someone's getting promoted, no. <laughs> <laughs> Just do me a favor. Out of respect for the man here, I want to say, to say, KC, 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 KC,